Hey guys, my name is Beryl. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through on how I edit live events. This is my editing process and it really works for me. And I know it might be different from you and that's okay. I'm sharing my thought process on how I overcome some of the roadblocks in editing. Here's how I see it. In editing, it's like driving a car and I need to go to my destination, which is to finish the video and impress my client. Along the way, there are roadblocks constructions, traffic jam that will slow me down. So I just need to find a way to be creative on how to get through to it. So watch until the end of the video to see what roadblocks are there and how I overcome them. This is my thought process in editing a highlight video. All the principles mentioned here in this video applies to weddings and vlogs. I'm hoping this video will help you to tell a better story. By the way, if you want to see the final video, you can check out the link in the description. So here's my first step in editing a live event. Organize footage. I create a folder with the date and title to it. This is going to be helpful, especially if you shoot a lot. When dumping all files, I make sure it will be in just one storage and I back up everything to my NAS. In editing, I always use SSD, but for this project, I use the WD external hard drive, 8TB since this is a 4TB footage. It's a massive footage. And I will create proxies anyway. This was a two and a half day, three Sony cameras from me and two cameras from the production. If you watch on how I filmed this live event, you will understand. Anyway, in creating folders, I make sure that I'm using numbers like 01 clips, 02 audio, 03 adobe project file and so on. It will be easier to find something because everything is in order. I'm a person who's disorganized because I have a lot of ideas. But this trick really helps me to organize my footage. For this project, I started 0 day 1, 02 day 2, 03 day 3, 04 adobe project file and so on. And when I open 02 day 2, you will see 01 clips, 02 audio, 03 photos. You get the idea. Once I'm done copying, I will open Adobe Premiere Pro and create a project file. Whatever my title in my folder is also my title in my Adobe project file. So the next step is import footage. I drag everything in Premiere Pro. When I add folders here, I also number them so it will be in order. I have an extra step because I'm using the picture profile HLG and I need to select all the footage, right click and interpret footage and go to color space and choose Rec 709. So here's my next step, create proxies. This is optional if you have a fast computer and a hard drive. Since I'm using this WD external hard drive, I will create proxies. Before, you need the preset to do this, but now with the new version of Premiere Pro, I just right click to all the footage and create proxies and choose low quality. That's about it. But since this will take some time to proxy, I always do this the night before so when I wake up and start editing, it's all done. Let's go to the next step, cutting the A-roll or speeches. Now this is a process where I start creating my story. I ask this question, what am I looking for? Since I shot this event, I felt inspired. I saw people had high energy and they're having fun. I saw there was a gala night and people were awarded for their hard work. I felt there was a competition to be number one. I can relate to people who had pain and suffering to their story. And I heard my client who hired me for this event had the solution and that is to stretch their visions and to be part of this amazing team. If I hear they're talking about their team, I pick those ones too. When cutting testimonials, I'm just looking for their experience describing the event. The shorter, the better. Last night would have felt like it was super emotional. I also want to take note of the person who won the overall MVP. Number one MVP strategy Thompson! Once I found something, I just cut and place it above. I also use markers for this so it's easier to find the things or persons I'm looking for. I'll listen to all speeches but I don't finish them all because I'm going for my gut here. 
If I hear the person starts dabbling within the first 5 minutes of his speech, I'll skip it. I can feel if the person is really connecting with the audience and delivering his story so well. You will feel it as you go on gigs after gigs because you're getting better. So let's go to this woman. She was talking about her story on how she joined this team. She was so confident to tell her story and I can really feel the pain. She knows how to deliver a speech because people are laughing, people are crying, and she's crying too. So I know her story will be in the highlight video. I'm a divorcee, no education, no work experience, two beautiful children by my side. But I had this good friend, Mike, and he was also a single parent. So we spent some time together. And man, we laughed a lot. And you know what happens when you laugh a lot with someone? You get pregnant. So I'll just cutting and choosing the best speeches that might go to the highlight video. So once I'm done cutting all the speeches, I'll go ahead to my next step, finding the music. This is the first roadblock in my opinion. It will take you hours or days just to find the right music. That's why I use Musicbed. I've been with Musicbed for 5 years now and I tried some music licensing website which are great too but I just keep coming back to this site. It is pricey but the quality of music here is unreal. I can share some of my playlists here. I have 3 playlists for wedding. I categorize them as cheesy, epic and static. If you want to see them, check the link in the description. Before I go on searching the right music, I will scan quickly and check my playlist. I might save some music before so I go to my project then check some of my playlists. If I see something, I just download them. I found my third song in the previous project I made but ended up not using it so in this project I use this song. It's called Die For You by The Siege. When searching for music, I always go for mood. In this project, I'm aiming for an epic music. So I picked Sirius, then I go to Attributes and choose Aggressive and Dark. Now I will listen to the intro, then I will listen to the chorus. Once I heard something that really fit in my project, I will put it in my playlist and download it. I might not use it in this project but I might use it in my future projects. That's why I save it on my playlist. I won't listen to the whole music, I just download a bunch of them. So in the fourth tab, I found this music called Gladiator by Cairo and this is the first song I used. I removed the aggressive and dark and changed it to dramatic. The pages went to 78. I also go to advance and choose has build and the pages went from 78 down to 19. I found this song called The War Is Back by Riley and I love it. I really like songs with build because you have some space to put the speeches to tell the story. I found this in the second page. The more you describe the music, the more it gets filtered. And the more it gets filtered, the less music you will go through. I download the instrumental version and the songs with vocals. Now that I've downloaded all the music, I will add it in my folder and I will go to my next step and that is to remix the music. In remixing the music, you need to have a plan. So my game plan here is to have a montage at the first minute of the video. And I'm planning to make 4 to 6 minute highlight video because that's what I promised to the client. The first minute is a montage. It is a way to show everything that happened for two and a half days and also a great way to cut it for IG Reels. I used this song called The Gladiator by Cairo and used the first part of it. Now this is the second roadblock for me. How can I fit this in just a minute? And in music guys, there's a number of beat in each music. I didn't study about music so I'm just relying in my experience here. So for this music, there are 7 beats. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I can cut anywhere and combine the music as long as they're in the same beat. I tried to do it under a minute but I didn't like how it sounds so I went back to the original music and cut in 14 second mark and combined it with 1 minute and 31 second mark to 2 minute and 20 second. I really like the ending here and I know I can add sound effects and reverb to emphasize the ending. I remixed this music and I went back to the original music because I'm aiming for under a minute for Instagram Reels. But I remember I can go to 90 seconds. 
This is the real editing. It's back and forth and as a video editor, I have to decide which way to go. Now, the third roadblock is how will I transition from first music to the second music without the viewers noticing? Or how can I transition from first sequence to second sequence to third sequence? There are a lot of techniques I use to hide the transition. One of my favorite is to use the same vibe of music. Notice, I cut the first music and fade in the second music. Now, it didn't blend perfectly, but I will show you later once I put sound effects to it. The other way to hide the transition is my next step, creating a story. This is the most important skill that needs to develop as a video editor. I'm still learning about it. So, in my editing, I start with a question, then one minute montage. The one minute montage is about people who were hyped up to enter the room and get their seat because this is a rush sitting and this is about people who receive their awards the vibe of competing to one another and the announcement of overall mvp the fourth roadblock for me is what to put in my timeline i already solved this intro the next one for me is to go back to where the convention really started so i'm looking for some hero who can tell the story about going to this event if the things they are saying are emotional and relatable to people then we have a winner I remember this lady, she was talking about her first two years in this business and she needs to go to this event. See, the conversation that I had with my husband before I took this trip is, Amber, you got to get your shit together. You got to start making some money or you need to go get a job. And also this guy. I've been here broke. I've been here with nothing. I've been here, I had to borrow money from my mom to come to convention. People can relate to it because attending convention is expensive, especially if you travel. The first two people were going to their pain moments. To ease the pain, we need motivation. So the third person who talked was my client. See, the generation before you have paved the road. See, they believed in us when there was nothing to believe in. They came to our events when there were six of us. But we sold the dream and we doubled down. We put our money where our mouth was. We put our financial livelihoods on the line for you guys. The next person talks about that they had some babies in convention. Now, I really like what she said and I know I can put that in the highlight video because that's her experience and nobody can question that. And it's kind of funny. The people there were laughing. So from pain to motivation to laughter. Convention's very special to me because we made some babies at convention. So let me tell you, some of you guys are going to have some fun tonight and that's okay. You can make some babies and grow them in the... I didn't use the second statement when she said that you can have babies and grow them in that environment. Don't get me wrong, I really like this environment. But in order to protect her, I won't put that in the highlight video because not most people will agree on that and people might question that statement. I'm also protecting myself guys in re-editing. Now I found somewhere in that clip before they announced the winners. She said, Let's get some music! That's a great transition from telling a story to montage. So this is the second montage in the video. In this montage, I put all of the fun stuff, dancing, casino, and bowling. I end this montage by honoring someone who passed away and drone shot pushing out at night. Let's give it up for Teddy's and My life has been great. That's a great way to end the second music and transition to the last sequence. Going to the third part of the video, I start with a time lapse that I changed my mind to play it in a real time because I'm aiming for a storytelling mode, not fast, not powerful. That's why when I filmed this, I just recorded in 24p for 5 to 10 minutes because the next sequence is about compelling reasons and how this business changed people's lives. Now I put the third montage in the third music and I switch from instrumental to vocals in chorus because the vibe of the music sounds like camaraderie. This reflects to this team because even though they're fighting to be number one, they're still friends outside of business. And when I have this pace of music that's loud and kind of fast, then slow at the end, 
That is a nice play to put a closing statement and end the video. Now, to feel I'm done, I will put the logo or text at the end so I can trick my mind that I'm almost done. After putting and combining the A-roll and music, now let's go to my next step, which is finding B-roll. I can put this step after I cut A-roll, but for me, I don't want to cut the B-roll if I don't know what I'm looking for. Since I already have the framework of my story, it will be easier for me to find the B-rolls I need. Everything can adjust here, so this is easy stuff. We already did the half of the editing. As much as I can, I want to relate the B-roll to my A-roll. That's why it's called B-roll. B-roll is there to help tell the story. B-roll is the reason why people retain attention when watching a video. So the same thing what I did for the A-roll. When I cut the B-roll that I like, I will place it above. In finding B-roll, I like to create a scene. A scene is made up of shots, like the first scene I did. People waiting for the doors to open. Somebody is hyping them up and they went inside. Next scene is the couple receiving their award. Wide shot using gimbal. They went up to the stage and high-fiving people. Next scene is people entering and registering for the event. Next scene is people having fun, dancing, bowling, and gambling. So when you combine this together, you have a sequence. Sequence is made up of scenes. Now this is my fifth roadblock because I don't have any bureaus of the speaker. She was talking about her story and my b-rolls can't connect to what she was saying. I don't even have shots of her when she went on the stage because she was late for some reasons. Because if I have a shot of her going up on the stage, that would be a good shot of her talking about herself. I didn't capture her when she was hugging people, so I did put whatever b-rolls that I can. I did capture her and her team, which is good. I just put gimbal shot of her while speaking on the stage and some reaction of people. I consider this as a roadblock because it took me some time to create a sequence for her. Fortunately, the second guy who I picked had some b-rolls while bowling. He was with his family and I have b-rolls of him and his daughter playing, which was related to his story. I created a scene of them bowling. I did the scene quickly. Once I'm done with the b-roll, I'm proceeding to my next step, which is color correction. I always open the Lumetri scopes with the Parade RGB and Waveform Luma. I always start with the black in Lumetri color and see if the details in Waveform hits zero. I adjust the whites and shadow and exposure to hit around 80 to 90. I add contrast and waveform in curves to add punch in my image. I adjust the temperature and tint as needed. I base this in Parade RGB. I make them the same wave as possible to make the white white. And I add saturation. These are only guides. My eyes always make the final decision. Color correction starts in shooting. If I expose it perfectly, it will be easier for me to color grade the footage. But if I messed up my exposure, white balance in filming, then it means more work in the editing room. In order for me to find the look that I want, I use a lot. And it's kind of going for teal and orange, but not much. So this is my next step, color grain. I put adjustment layer above the footage and add the lot that I want. I put this lot to 100% because it really fits in HLG. And sometimes I put it in 50%, so it depends on the needs. And put another adjustment layer above to compensate for the wash look when I export the final video. This is because I'm using Premiere Pro on MacBook Pro. And this is my sixth roadblock, color correcting and grading the drone footage. I was at 1600 ISO on this and still underexposed. I think I should shot this at 3200, maybe it will fix my problem. I'm at D-Lag already, but I don't know if that really helps. So I put the lot D-Lag to Rec 709 Vivid version 1 and adjust everything. I duplicate the clip to adjust more of the exposure and put the opacity to 7%. I'm not happy about it because it's too much noise. This roadblock I can't fix anymore, so I just move on. So here's my next step, sound design. In adding sound effects, I use Envato Elements and Audio.com. I just put basic stuff like CT ambient sounds, ambulance sirens, clapping, and people cheering. I use a riser and bass drop. I also put some bowling sound effects. I label them in purple, but I think the most important sound effects that you can put in the video is the actual sounds, like this ladies. <laughs> she forgot the code! We're supposed
supposed to do a chest bump. The people who were yelling and engaging to the camera were pure gold. I did put risers to enhance the scale effect on each clips. So I add a transform effect and add keyframe in scale at 100 and move it at the end. Then I move at the start of the clip and add a keyframe in scale at 150. Right click then keyframe and change it to ease in. When the guy announced the MVP, I cut it before he mentioned the name. Nest it and fade it out. Add a studio reverb in the nested clip. Adjust everything and put a constant power between the audio and it worked really well. Number one MVP! I did that because I want the voice to echo because we were in a big space or city. It is also to emphasize that the first montage is done and we are entering to the next sequence. Add ambient city and distant ambulance sirens. That's epic. Now here's my 7th roadblock. My Zoom F3 was recording the audio and was getting the music of the DJ. Number 1 MVP Challenge I told the guy, not the owner, if he can send me the speeches only, no music. For some reason, he can't do it so I just shrug it off and move on. When I got in the post-production, I have this audio file with the music. Now I really need to separate the music from the speech of this guy because this is one of the highlights in my storytelling. Lucky enough, I found the website called vocalremover.org and I tried to separate the audio from the music. It did a great job in separating the music from the speeches, but the music has vocals to it. So I can still hear the artist singing in the background. Now, I can't do anything about it. I just add my background music and I think it really turned out okay. Number one, MVP, Thompson! So it's very important to record it the right way. So I will be faster in editing. Each roadblock takes some time to fix. And sometimes it takes money to fix the roadblock. If I can go back to this scenario, I will talk to the guy and I will use my IMP splitter and put this in the second channel of my Zoom F3 and keep the channel 1 with the music. Or I will talk to a guy, maybe the owner, who really knows how to not send the music. As you can see, I also make mistakes in shoots and that's okay because I'm still a work in progress. So once I'm done with the sound design, I go to my next step which is to export my timeline. So I go at the start of the video and hit I for mark in and go to the end of the video, hit O for mark out and come to file export or click command M for shortcut or just click the word export here. Now, if you want to go back to your timeline, just hit the edit tab. Now, let's go back to the export tab. You can rename the video and choose a location where to save it. If you are exporting it for a higher quality, maybe the video needs to play in a big screen or you need a master file, I choose QuickTime under format, then video codec is Apple ProRes 422HQ. But if you're uploading this on YouTube, then I'll choose H.264 and pick the preset YouTube 4K Ultra HD. Okay, I hope this helped you guys. If you got some value out of this content, please like and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, comment down below and I would love to help. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys soon.